Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and dirts alike, welcome, welcome all. I am Bullet Mike with the <laughs> Paddle Gaming Network and Yowsh bringing you Creepy Gaming. For those who don't know, this is the show where we take a look at all kinds of creepy video game aspects over the years. Today, we will be taking a look at none other than Animal Crossing New Leaf. Special! Sorry, it's the wife. She's a little, uh... Yepity yep yep yep. Come on, baby, I'm trying to record here! Now don't give me that! Oh, come on, that's uncalled for. Talking like that, you're liable to hurt my feelings. Oh, if you talk about your mother one more time, just one more time, why don't you go down there and make me a sandwich? I'm trying to work here. Don't quit busting my balls. Come on! Oh, you gonna bring that up again, huh? I'm never gonna hear the end of that. Anyway, special shout out to these fine folks right here thank you for your suggestions so without further ado turn the lights down oh baby baby i'm sorry i didn't mean it baby stop please i didn't mean it i didn't mean it i'm sorry i love you i love you In 2001, Nintendo released the first Animal Crossing. The game was a hit, launching another successful Nintendo franchise, spawning several sequels. The series was known for utilizing the system's internal clock, simulating real-time gameplay. So basically, if you play the game at 3 in the afternoon, it will be 3 o'clock in the game. If you play at midnight, then it'll be midnight in-game, and so on. It was a pretty unique concept. I can honestly say that these games are unlike anything I've ever played. The layout to Animal Crossing titles are usually about the same. You play as a self-named villager who settles in a new town full of neighborly animals. You collect items, earn money, and meet new friends. This game is just so sweet, cute, and cuddly that there can't be anything creepy about this, right? Right? Am I right? Dear God, please let me be right. If these animals bathe in the sacrificial blood of the innocent, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. Earlier in the summer of 2013, Nintendo released another installment to the series, Animal Crossing New Leaf, although the game has been out in Japan since December. Getting an overall great response from both players and critics alike, New Leaf added a lot of new features to the series. One of the game's many features is known as the Dream Suite. As mayor of your own village, you will have the option of working on public works projects. After seven days, the Dream Suite will be added to the list of recommended projects. Anyways, long story short, using the Dream Suite, you will have access to other towns. The one we will be taking a look at today is Ica Village, also known as the Horror Town. Translated, Ica could mean elegy, lament, love song, or even sad song, which would be pretty fitting for this particular tale. Now, there's a lot to this one, so bear with me here. And I don't always ask this, but please watch till the end to better understand the full story. This dreary dream town has caused a lot of buzz since the game's release for its morbid backstory and suggestive imagery. Once in the village, you'll immediately notice that it doesn't fit the rest of the game's upbeat tone. Ica Village is dry, dull, and for lack of a better word, dead. At first, you'll notice the amount of flowers in the area, but as you progress, you'll notice that the land becomes more barren, possibly a representation of death. Now, each house in this region tells a story. There are other houses, but they belong to the town's residents, and they don't really further the plot. So I will break down each of the four main houses and the theories behind them. This is documentation of my first visit to the strange town. 
So if you don't want it spoiled for you and you want to check it out for yourself, then quit watching. Here is the dream address if you're wanting to visit Ica Village. The first house is found to the north, surrounded by flowers and marked with a red roof. Upon entering, you'll immediately hear the song Hypno KK in the background. It's the song you're hearing right now. On the ground floor, you will notice three figures around the dinner table. The one in the middle with the red hat looked to be celebrating a birthday. I noticed a cabinet on the right side of the room. When I opened it up, I was met with the message, pretend like nothing was seen. What does this mean? What was so bad in this cabinet that I would want to immediately forget? I noticed there was a back room, but the pathway was blocked. I then decided to go upstairs. There you will see what appears to be some sort of playroom filled with toys, and in particular, this doll in red. There are also three paintings in the center of the room. One is of a woman, the next is what looks to be a man, woman, and child, and the third painting appears to be a dog outside of a doghouse. When I left the home, I was met with a girl in red. We'll call her Ika. She was wearing the same red outfit as the middle mannequin in the house. When I spoke to her, a series of Japanese text appeared. When translated, it says, I love my mommy. This creepy girl in red appears throughout the entire village, but more on her in a minute. As I journeyed to the next home, I ran across a few of the other resident houses along the way. Again, they're not really pivotal to the Ica story, although a few of the creepy red dolls can be found. I noticed on the cliffside to the northwest of the town a burial plot on the beach. This area is unaccessible unless you have a wetsuit. There's another graveyard in the town, but because the grave site on the beach is by itself, maybe it represents something more. But I'll save my theories until after the story. The second home, marked by a green roof, features a maze of chairs. You must sit on the chairs in order to navigate your way to the back of the dark room. Once there, you'll see a doorway. When I entered the quiet room, I noticed that the place was filled with dolls and mannequins, all of which have their back to you. What are they supposed to be looking at? If you rotate the camera, you will see the wall behind you. There you will see paintings of, dare I say, hyper-realistic eyes. I then made my way to the second floor. There I found two statues, an apple and a snake, clearly representing the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The basement of this house appears to be some sort of birthday room. The basement is filled with dolls of all colors sharing some sort of feast. If you look behind the back row of dolls, an axe can be found. What the fuck? On my way to the third house, I ran across the graveyard as forementioned. The collapsed dirt around the tombstones indicated that something was buried there. If you attempt to dig, you will find a doghouse, which is strange. Is this in reference to the painting of the dog that I mentioned before? Am I looking too much into this? Eh, probably. Moving on, I also discovered a slope to the beachfront. While down there, I discovered a pair of shoes by the water. Now, don't get me wrong, there are scattered items all over this town, but this is the only place that I saw these shoes. Some of you are probably thinking, what's so creepy about a pair of shoes? Well, it is customary in Japanese culture for someone to remove their shoes before they commit suicide. The third house was marked by a dull red roof with a very tattered exterior. Upon entering, I saw a room full of bookshelves. I was welcomed by the girl in red. How did she get here so quick? When I talked to her, she spouted out another Japanese phrase. When translated, she again says, I love my mommy. But this time, the text was distorted. 
I couldn't enter the main room because she blocked my path, but I noticed behind her was the red doll along with the axe. Upstairs was filled with furniture with the same designs as the painting in the first house. The creepiest part of this room though definitely had to be the doll with its back to you watching a static screen TV. This game is fucked up. As I went back downstairs, the girl in the red hat had moved out of the way and I gained access to the ground floor. Navigating through a maze of bookshelves, I discovered the room to the right. Inside was a piano with eight Easter eggs. What could this possibly represent? I then found my way to the room to the north. Inside was filled with paper along with two glass cases and what seemed to be two journals. I made my way back to the bookshelf maze. I almost exited the home until I found out that the house had a basement as well. What I found next had to be one of the most disturbing things I'd seen yet.